Today we will be making a French specialty called ratatouille, but today since it's spooky edition we will be making rat a -tui. So originally when I decided I was going to make ratatouille, um, my, actually my producer Oliver, it was his idea to do this spooky season style and call it rat a -tui. So I was going to ask my mom for her recipe because she makes a delicious one and um, she is native to France but she didn't actually have the recipe to send me and then um, she was going to tell me over the phone and then we just forgot. So today I ended up googling um, a recipe and I picked the highest rating one and it just so happened to be from one of my favorite cooking blogs, Cookie and Kate, which I've made um, now a couple recipes on the channel from her blog. Everything is vegetarian and very easy to make and um, always been a success so you can watch my corn salsa episode for a good summer treat and also my uh, banana bread muffin recipe was also from her blog so here I go now today I'm making her ratatouille and we're gonna have so much fun and a little spookiness um, doing it alrighty so here we have the ingredients for ratatouille and in case you don't know what that is um, it's basically like a tomato stew. It's like a very warming comfort food, so perfect for fall and this time of year, which is why I decided to make it. Um, but it's, it is good any time of year as well. But, all right, the ingredients. We are gonna do one yellow squash, so we're gonna do one of these. We're gonna need fresh basil, one of these zucchinis, we're gonna do one yellow onion, one eggplant. I've got four tomatoes here. Um, she said to do four to six tomatoes, about two pounds. Um, I chose the beefsteak tomatoes because I think they're the juiciest. Um, but you know, you can actually go with whatever um, you would like. And we've got one clove of, we're gonna do one clove of garlic, I think, maybe more, I'll double check. Um, and then one yellow bell pepper. Then we've got oregano, some salt and pepper, which are the staples, and of course, olive oil. First things for, ooh. <laughs> this is Peter. He's a little spooky cat. First step is we are going to preheat the oven to 400 and 25 degrees and we're gonna pull out two oh it looks like we need to, might need to clean this one we're gonna pull out two um baking sheets because we're gonna be roasting a bunch of vegetables on these and i'm not sure i don't remember my mom ever doing it like this in the oven and there were some comments saying that they um it was a different way but we're gonna do it the way kate does it and we're gonna see how it turns out We'll just clean this one off too, just for good measure. Stick and span. Now we prepare the vegetables. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this off really quickly. Um, and then we'll get to preparing the vegetables. 
Okay, so we've got four ripe tomatoes here. And after washing and drying them, we're now going to take a knife. And we're going to cut um, any of the hard, the inner, um, they call it woody part. So what I do, like you don't want to eat this and your ratatouille, it's not gonna be good. So basically what I do, and I'm kind of just winging this, um, what you do is cut it in half and then I just kind of take the knife, be really careful um, and just kind of cut this center part out because you're not this part. We're not gonna want this for the um, ratatouille. Boom, 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 boom. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that with all four. These tomatoes are really juicy. The juicier the better. Ooh, and be careful while you're doing this. Right, halfway there. I'm sure if a chef saw me right now, they would be um, appalled with my cutting skills. <laughs> Shout out to Alex Fitzpatrick. But um, maybe one of these days I'll take a real cooking class and learn. I kind of just go at it from my own angle. But just be careful not to chop off any fingers in the process. And last but not least, so I'm going to take all these um, cores and throw them away. So I wish I had a uh, clear bowl that was big enough to show you what I'm going to be doing in this next step because it's going to be extra dangerous <clears throat> and spooky. But um, we don't, so you'll have to imagine what's happening inside the bowl. But we are going to take this cheese grater. And we are going to, so basically we want to crush up the tomatoes. So we're taking them, we're going to grate them into the bowl. So this is the extra kind of dangerous part. Um, so be very careful not to uh, lose a finger. And if this doesn't work, because I'm having a little difficulty, um, then we can also blitz it in a food processor. I feel like, okay, so this is what it's looking like. I feel like I might just end up chopping it up finely, because that's the way I remember it being with my mom. But then I don't know if we should just follow the recipe. I don't know. I feel like this is a little mushier, but I'm just gonna, maybe we'll do half and half. We're gonna grind up half the tomatoes and then the other half we're gonna um, finely chop so it's not, it's a little bit of both. The skin is the hardest part to get get there, but I guess that that's good because it leaves some chunks. It's actually looking pretty good. I'm, I think I'm just gonna do it with all of them actually. This is what's gonna make it kind of saucy. All right, halfway there. what it looks like that was my first time doing that actually and um, so basically it's kind of like if you were to buy um, you know crushed tomatoes in a can that's basically what this is so this is gonna be could be really good for the base of a homemade pasta sauce or ratatouille so next we're going to prepare the rest of the vegetables next up we are going to dice this eggplant toss it with some olive oil and put it on its own pan all by itself because it's special so here we go. And I'm dicing into pieces about that big. Okay, so with one hand, I'm going to put it onto this pan. 
Just a few stragglers. And then we're going to take some olive oil, just kind of coat it. There we go. Now we're moving. Okay, that should be good. And we're just going to kind of massage it in there so that it um, is all coated. And then we can put some sea salt on there. Where did that come from? Oh my goodness. Ah! Anyway. That was kind of scary. <laughs> We're gonna put some sea salt on here. Not too much, but just so that it helps, um, you know, give it a little flavor. And next, on to the rest of the veggies. And next, we will be doing the same thing that we did with the eggplant. With the uh, bell pepper, which you can choose red, yellow, or orange. Um, I chose yellow since we already had the tomatoes. I didn't want it to be the same color, um, but yellow and orange are actually my two favorites. So any color but green, basically, or purple. And then we're gonna do so we're gonna do the bell pepper, one bell pepper, one onion, one zucchini, and one squash. We're gonna chop, wash, and chop all of those. Toss, toss them all together with some olive oil, olive oil, salt, and put them on the other pan. Okay, so here we have now the other vegetables. I lied earlier, we're saving the onion for later, but we have one zucchini, one squash, and one bell pepper. And I realized after I should have gone with the orange bell pepper because we've got the green zucchini, the yellow squash, the red tomato, the purple eggplant, and we could have covered the orange also, but you live and you learn. So if you're making it at home, I would recommend going with the orange if you wanna be having a full color palette on your plate, even though it is gonna be all mushed together in the end anyway. But anyway, we're gonna add some olive oil and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the eggplant. I'm going to douse that, massage it in and then put some salt and pepper and we are going to put, um, oop, man down. <laughs> Put these in the oven um, to bake for 15 minutes. As much as a single layer as possible so that they um, we make sure that they cook evenly. So here I'm going to put the eggplant on the, we don't have a top, middle, and um, bottom rack. I only have middle, and, or top and bottom, I guess, really. So I'm gonna put the eggplant on the bottom, middle or bottom, and then the other vegetables are going to go on top and we are going to set a timer for 15 minutes and let those babies roast next up i'm going to grab a soup pan dutch oven or soup pan and um we're going to uh, cook some olive oil on medium medium high heat with the one whole diced onion and we're gonna cook that for about eight to 10 minutes um, until it gets nice and tender. Now we don't chop onions often in Gaga's kitchen, but when we do, we look styling doing it. Remember, the trick is it keeps the onion juices from getting in your eyes and making you cry. So we're gonna chop up a whole onion now. Washing my hands as quickly as possible, throwing out these, um, whatever they're called, coverings, <laughs> onion coverings, and rinsing the cutting board. We're getting rid of all the juices as quickly as possible to avoid uh, tears in our eyes. All right. And there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and wash my hands now, also because it never hurts to wash your hands again. All right, so here I've got one onion cooking 
in this soup pan um, with some olive oil over medium heat. And it's perfect because it says to cook the onion for eight to 10 minutes and we have exactly eight minutes and seven seconds left on the vegetables. So we'll know at just the right time when we can start adding the garlic. And then I think we'll add the tomatoes, some oregano. It's gonna be delicious. Down is on. Ooh. All right, the onions are browning. We are going to really quickly take the vegetables out. Ooh, it's hot, hot, hot. Be careful when you open the oven. Ooh, it smells good. Look at these beautiful steaming vegetables. So, this is gonna be fun. We're taking them out. And don't get too confused, guys. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna kind of like, oh, uh-oh. All right, it's sticking a little bit more than I expected it to. All right, hold on one second. Okay, I'm just going to, this cooked way faster than I expected, so I'm just gonna kind of like move everything around. And then we, it says to cook it for 10 more minutes, but that seems like it's gonna be way overcooked. So I'm gonna do what it says. I'm gonna put it back in on the top rack this time for 15 minutes, or sorry, 10 more minutes. And same thing with the vegetables. We're gonna stir these up. These aren't quite as cooked. And this get, these get another 15 minutes on the bottom rack this time. So we'll do that. Stick this in, back in on the bottom rack. I'm setting the timer for whoop, uh, 10 more minutes this time. Okay, here we go. 10 more minutes this time. And we're gonna finish up with the sauce in the um, pot now. Okay guys, I am pleased to announce, I'm actually gonna lower the heat onto like medium low now because I don't want the um, onions to overcook. We're about to add some garlic in here. Medium low, like number four. Pleased to announce that we now have a garlic crusher thingy. If anyone knows, oh. <laughs> if anyone knows what this is actually called, it just um, please let me know, but it makes crushing garlic so much easier. So we're gonna do four cloves. While the onions were cooking, I already went ahead and took off the shell from the cl four cloves. So you just stick it in here. It's kind of a, all right. And then you just crush it. And then we can take a knife that in. So we're going to do that four times. Make sure that in between each one you're cleaning out this little piece that's on here. This actually used to be my favorite thing to do when I was helping my mom cook growing up, was crushing the garlic. So this is starting to smell very fragrant. actually way easier to clean than the one that we have. Alrighty, I'm just turning this back up a little bit and we are stirring in the garlic. Just a few seconds until it's kind of all combined and you can really smell it. And next we are going to add the tomatoes to this. It's okay if it splatters on my dress today since I already am covered in blood. Oh my goodness, wow. This smells so good. It smells like um, like a fresh pasta sauce you would get at like a good Italian restaurant or your Italian grandmother's house. So we're gonna stir this up. The eggplant has another about five and a half minutes. So we're just gonna let this cook and simmer um, until the eggplant is ready. 
And then we'll add the eggplant and then we'll give the other vegetables another five minutes or so and then they will get um, transferred into the pot as well. Alrighty, I switched up my costume a little bit because it's Halloween, you can dress up as whatever you want. So we are just about to add the eggplant to the tomato sauce. Timer's going off. Here we go. All right, it's definitely done cooking. And I'm just going to take this and add it into the tomatoes. It's definitely nice and golden brown and soft. This pan is gonna be a pain. Okay, so we're gonna stir the eggplant into the tomato. We're giving the other veggies about five more minutes in the oven. And in the meantime, I'm going to wash and chop up the basil. Then we're gonna add the basil in. We'll add the other veggies in. We will add some more olive oil, salt, pepper, Ooh, oregano. And what I forgot about earlier is definitely getting adventurous today, doing some crushed red pepper. And while we have a little time, we're gonna clean as we go. So this is very easy cleanup. This is actually a very uh, easy recipe. It's really just a bunch of chopping and stirring and baking and mixing and uh, chopping, mixing, washing, stirring, baking. It's pretty much all that cooking really is, so um, doing a bunch of that. So I'm just gonna clean up really quickly and pretty soon, in about a minute or so, we're gonna add the other veggies and the rest of the ingredients. Turning the oven off, taking the rest of the vegetables out. Look at that, wow. And we're gonna add it in here along with the rest of the ingredients. Then we're gonna let it simmer for about an hour and then we will get to try it. Now let it simmer for one hour. And I almost forgot about the basil. My goodness. All right, we're gonna add this in and then we will let it simmer for an hour. We were supposed to do a quarter cup of basil. I went a little crazy on it. But it's just gonna make it taste even better, I think. All right, so yeah, the longer this cooks, the better. And it's honestly, each day it tastes better too. Cause it's kind of like chili, how the flavors um, can kind of marinate and like really absorb. So we're gonna give this about an hour simmering on low heat. And then tonight, my roommates and I are having a little spooky night of The Bachelorette and we will get to try that. Hey guys, I'm just checking in for my little powwow today. So um, 
I know I'm going to keep it short and sweet because the ret a is just about ready. But um, I just wanted to check in and say that um, while the ratatouille was simmering, I actually jumped on a Zoom call that I joined a few weeks, starting a few weeks ago um, with this church in New York City that I was attending before um, the pandemic. Um, I joined a small group that meets once a week and it's been really good for me because it's been um, kind of forcing me to do like morning devotionals again and get that, um, uh, get that community that, um, you know, just talk with people and get community and get their different perspectives and things. But the reason why I wanted to talk about it was because I was actually running a little bit late for it, um, because I was filming, I was trying to wrap up filming the, or making the food before it had to simmer. And I was running late, and so in the back of my head I was thinking, okay, well, whatever, I'm just going to skip it tonight, it's fine. And last minute I decided that I was going to join and that it was okay to join late. And I'm so glad that I did, just because I feel like it was a really good conversation and we all got a lot out of it. And sometimes I just have to... My phone has a mind of its own and just stopped recording, but... Basically, the point is, is that a friend of mine told me um, over the summer one day that it's better late than never. And so sometimes I think we tend to sabotage ourselves because, oh, we might be a little bit behind. And so we just decide, okay, well, whatever, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to not do it. I'm just going to ignore it. My responsibilities, I'm going to ignore the things that I know make me feel good just because maybe I didn't, you know, my schedule kind of got mixed. Mix mixed up or messed up a little bit but the truth is is that it's okay to not be perfect it's you know definitely I need to work on um being on time but I guess the point is is that you know just because you're running late don't sabotage yourself and you know it could be anything like if you're trying to exercise more let's say you told yourself you're going to wake up on Monday morning and go for a run at 7 a.m. and then you hit the snooze alarm and you don't end up going for your run at 7 a.m. Monday morning. That doesn't mean that you then just are going to completely derail all of your plans and not go for a run at all this week. You know, maybe you want to go for a run in the evening or you can go for a run tomorrow morning or whatever. Basically, it's never too late to do something good for yourself. And I just am really glad that, um, I joined the call today because the lesson was all about confidence in God, which I could definitely use right now. So, um, you know, I'm really glad that I did it and it was the perfect amount of time to let the ratatouille, um, simmer anyway also. So it worked out and next I'm going to go check on it. So let's go see what the ratatouille is up to. And that is how you make rat a tooie, my friends. No, but seriously, these kitties have. Are you saying hello to the camera? They have these little mice toys that I always almost step on every day and think that they're real. Um, but yeah, Peter is being extra affectionate for the camera today, aren't you? Yeah. Alrighty, we're gonna plate up the rat a tooie. And here we go. Wow. It smells so good. Alrighty, look at that, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat. And I'm going to plate these up. I'm going to serve it with some toast and brie on the side. Because it does taste good with like a little crusty bread. You could also serve it with chicken on the side. This could be like a side dish, but I obviously didn't make anything else today. So we're just gonna have it with some crusty bread and some brie, of course, because we're going with the Francais vibe. Oh, I really gotta do it. <laughs> 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 Woo! Alrighty, here we are. I've we're gonna never try. actually had ratatouille. So here are my room. Oh, we got a pumpkin. It's Katie's first time having ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, tell us about your ratatouille experience. I had it recently at a French restaurant, but I'm excited to try this one. I was actually with Katie, and I swear she had a bite of it. So oh, oh. Have you ever had it 
Okay, okay I've but have either of you had rat no. a chewy? Ooh, creepy. <laughs> All righty, pick your poison, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. I'm served in that. I know. <laughs> Tupperware. Yeah, but this brie or cheese? It's brie cheese on some crusty I mean, toasted I meant to bread. Say butter. I think you just have to try the rat. Yeah, or you can try it with the bread. Whatever I'm going, you want. I like a bit. I like a bite of everything. Mmm. You can taste every vegetable. It's delicious. Mmm. It's a little hot. It's good though, right? It's really good. Mmm. <laughs> 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 like cloves in it. Oh. It yes, so good. Katie, there are fresh garlic cloves in there. Very I good. Did. I just got a whole bite. It's good. Oh, a whole garlic? I've got Oh, no, I, I didn't. A slice. I crushed it, though. With what? With the crusher, the garlic crusher oh, thingy. It's so hot. So maybe it's you got an onion. Squirrel. I don't oh. know, but here we go. Should I try it with the bread? Did it taste I good say, like that? Yeah, I like everything. Oh, I, need to, okay. I like everything all All right, all right here we go, guys. I'm going to try it. I did put a lot of basil in here. In the My favorite basil and garlic. Yeah. Where's our little wrap? Yum. Mm-hmm. Really good. And this is taking me straight back to childhood when my mom used to make this a lot. Straight so, back. straight back to childhood. This is taking me straight back to the streets of Paris. Would, did you hear that? <laughs> back to the streets of Paris. I've been there once. Which, um, I hope everyone's doing okay over there because I did hear that they were starting to lock stuff down. <laughs> again so um anyway i hope i hope that everyone's okay but um well there you go that's how you have it folks that is how you make rat a tui and we oh do you want to bring our little house rat over here for everyone to see you can bring him around here <laughs> this is <laughs> this is our little house rat he drinks out of the toilet and um, <laughs> he doesn't have proper etiquette. <laughs> Just caught him in the toilet. But, Wait, um, Gabby, is this supposed to be in there? What? <laughs> what is that? Oh my god. Like, what is that? Oh! finger wrapped up. Well, we have a, a lot to attend to. So I'm going to call it a night, guys, and um, you all stay safe out there, and I, I love you, and uh, let me know what you want to see me make next. Bye! do hers for her. Goodbye. <laughs>